AP Calculus AB, looking at homework 1.5. Find each limit. If you can't find it, explain why. Direct substitution won't work for this because if we do a sine of pi over 2, we're going to get 1. Our denominator is going to be 1 minus 1, which is going to be 0. That's not good. What we can do we can use some trig identities to help manipulate this problem. Cosine squared of theta is the same as 1 minus sine squared of theta. That's one of our trig identities manipulated. The numerator now can factor. It's the difference of two squares. It's 1 minus sine of theta times 1 plus sine of theta. We can cancel 1 minus sine of theta from the top and the bottom. Now we have the limit. This theta approaches pi over 2 of 1 plus sine of theta. We can now use substitution and get 1 plus sine of pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, which makes this 1 plus 1, which makes this 2. I really should start writing slower so that you can read what I'm writing. The reason that sine of pi over 2 is 1, just a quick review, pi over 2 is on the positive y-axis. In this location, both y and r are 1. Sine is r over is y over r, it's 1 over 1, which is 1. Number 2. Let's see. Can't use substitution for this. We'd be dividing by 0. We can break apart this into two fractions. That would be x over x and sine of x over x. One of the trig one of the trig limits, special limits that we learned in our notes says that this is going to approach one. And this first limit, x divided by x is one. So that's going to be one plus one, which is two again. Number three, to evaluate this limit. We have to see if the left and right sided limits agree. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, which is going to be 2x squared minus 3x. The reason it's that one is because x is less than 3. So if you're going to approach from the left, you have to be from the left. We have to also find the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of 8 minus cosine of pi times x over 3. Let's see what that is. This first one, if we put 3 in for the x, we're going to have 3 squared is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. And then we're subtracting 9. That's going to be 9. Down here, we're going to have 8 minus cosine of 3 pi over 3, which is 8 minus cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. That makes this 8 minus negative 1, which is 9. Hey, they're both 9. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 3 of this monstrosity Tell you what, let's just fix this and go right up here and say that's equal to 9. Let's not rewrite that. Let's save some time. Number four, using direct substitution will result in horrendous things. We'll be dividing by zero. Let's take this coefficient and pop it out to the front. And we would like to use this special 
limit for sine, but that only works if this angle three theta is the same as this angle. To make it the same, we can put a three on the top and the bottom, same as multiplying by one. Now this is going to equal one times a three times a two. That's going to make this six. Number five. Substitution is going to give us zero on the denominator again, so that's not going to work. We could factor an x out of the denominator. What that does for us, we can take this fraction and break it into a product of two fractions. We can make the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x times the limit as x approaches zero of one over two x minus one. This limit is one. This limit we can evaluate by putting zero in for the x value. And that's gonna give us negative one. Number six. I'm going to break this apart again. This first limit, these fives cancel, so now we have the limit as x approaches zero of x. I'm sorry, I have made a mistake here. I wrote so. I wrote so poorly, or I just wrote it down wrong, one or the other. It should be 5x over x, not over 5. So the x's cancel, and we're left with a 5. My apologies. The second one here, we need these to be the same numbers, 3x and the x, and they're not. So we can make this a 3x, so long as we also multiply the top by 3. You can write this 3 here, put it here, you can put it out here, put it wherever you want. I typically like to write it out in front here, but whatevs. So this is going to be plus 3 times 1. It's going to be 5 plus 3, which is going to make this 8. Number 7. This 6 is really a 1 6. So we can pull 1 6 out to the front. The angle is 2x. We'd like to have a 2x on the bottom. So to accomplish that, we're going to multiply the top and bottom by 2. We can put that 2 all the way out in front if we want. It's going to be 2 sixths times 1, because this is approaching 1, and that's going to make that 1 third. Number 8. And pull the two out to the front. Actually, I'm going to pull a two thirds out to the front. So I put this two out here and I put this three out here. You can't do anything with a four because it's the part of the angle and that's inside of a function. You can't do anything with that. So I need a 4 on the bottom as well, and I can't just throw it out there unless I multiply the top by a 4. So now we have 2 times 4 divided by 3. That's 8 thirds. This limit is going to be approaching 1. So that makes this 8 thirds. Number 9, direct substitution is going to give us 0 on the bottom, which is no good. I'm going to rewrite tangent as sine over cosine. We can cancel a cosine from the top and the bottom of the numerator. 
Now that gives us the limit as theta approaches zero of sine of theta over three theta. I'm going to pull that three out to the front. It's really, it's a third. It's not really a three because it was on the bottom. And then this limit is approaching one as it has all homework assignment. And that gives us a third. Number 10, can factor a three out of the numerator. Pull that three out to the front if I would like, and I would like. This is a special limit for cosine. If theta is approaching zero and you have one minus cosine of an angle over zero, that's going to approach zero. So that makes that zero. Number 11. See, I could rewrite this as the limit as theta approaches pi over two. Cosine of theta cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So I could just write tangent up here on top. And instead of writing tangent, I'm going to write it in terms of sine and cosine. Cosines cancel. Now we have the limit theta approaches pi over 2 of sine of theta. So we got sine of pi over 2, which is 1. Pi over 2 is on the positive y-axis, and in this location, r is 1, so is y, sine is y over r. 12. Hmm. You know what? We can use substitution right into this, and I think good things will happen. If I'm wrong, I'm going to erase it and start over. I have tangent of 0. On the bottom, I have sine of 0 minus cosine of 0. Tangent of 0, that is y over x, that's 0 over 1, which is 0. Sine of theta is 0 over 1. Cosine of theta is 1 over 1. That makes this negative 1. Two more. 13. If you put a 3 in, it's going to be divided by 0. It's going to be undefined. The numerator is the difference of two cubes. That factors into a binomial and a trinomial. If you use the SOAP acronym, the binomial is going to be subtraction, same sign. And in the trinomials, three terms, you have the opposite sign and then always positive. And the binomial, you take the cubed root of this first term minus the cubed root of the last term. And then in the trinomial, you take this first term squared, the last term squared, Multiply these two together to get the middle term. Once again, the signs, same, opposite, always positive. Hey, now we can cancel a C minus 3 from the top and the bottom. To evaluate the limit, we can just use substitution. Nine plus nine plus nine. That's 27. Last one. So using substitution is not going to work because we're going to have zero on the bottom. We could multiply the top out. See what happens if we did that. Or we can recognize this is the difference of two cubes once again. I have a binomial, 
times the trinomial. Same, opposite, always positive. What goes in this first position is the cubed root of this, which is x plus 3. Second position, cubed root of this, which is 2. First position is this first term squared. Last position is this last term squared. Middle position is these two times each other. So that would be 2 times the sum of x and 3. That is helpful because this is the same as x plus 1, which is a factor of the denominator. And that is helpful because once we eliminate that denominator, we can evaluate this limit. So now we have the limit as x approaches negative 1 of the sum of x and 3 squared plus the sum of x and 3 times 2 plus 4. To evaluate the limit, we're going to put negative 1 in for all of our x's. So we're going to have a negative 1 plus 3 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 3 plus 4. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 4 makes this 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is 12. Lost pointer controls. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yep, that finished.